This is a trip down memory lane for you, Mike, who on your 70th birthday can look back and see how your hard work changed the city of Sheffield into a better place. Volunteering to edit the student newspaper at Salford, where he was studying civil engineering, Mike realised he would much rather be a journalist than build bridges. So on leaving college and moving to London, he managed to get a job on everyone's favourite magazine, Mechanical Handling. He subsequently became the Labour correspondent for the Sheffield Telegraph, where his appetite for politics drew him into trade union activities. One particular dispute in 1978 saw journalists at the Nottingham Post go out on strike for six weeks and put Mike in a position he rarely found himself, as he recalled in a recent article. Mike was elected to Sheffield City Council in 1972. This was the beginning of his 26 years serving the city. Hi Mike, so here we are in Sheffield Town Hall's council chamber where you spent many hours in meetings over the 26 years that you were a councillor here. And you'll remember this seat was where you used to sit when you were leader at the council for the four years that that happened and you would be trying to keep the rabble in check and um, speak to motions, second motions, fiery debates about school uniforms and freedom of the city and various things like that. This was, this was the chair. During his time as leader, he was instrumental in making changes in the city. For example, the extension to the town hall, known locally as the egg box, was considered by many to be an eyesore. Once demolished, it enabled Mike to focus on creating a new and vibrant heart of the city. Some of those changes took a long time to complete and not everyone was initially on his side. Do you remember the protesters about chopping down the trees um, and how, what wicked people we were? Because there were those beautiful magnolia trees and we cut the things down to make this. I have to say all those years on, it's been a magnificent, absolutely magnificent success. And I think if you were to try and turn it back to the old beast guard, I'd be one of the protesters. And if you look back as well about things such as soup tram and all the absolute aggro we had about soup tram now, everybody hated it doing it. And now everybody wants it extending to outside their house. So sometimes I think you just have to look back and think that some of the things which were controversial at the time um, have turned out to be remarkable successes for the future of Sheffield. And a lot of that, mate, was down to you pushing it. And you know me, I didn't always agree with you because you're one of the people who makes the world go round and move on. I'm one of the people who says, oh, hang on, steady, steady. Mike's daughters, Sarah and Rachel, have fond memories of going to the town hall when they were younger. Sarah recalls doing her homework and reading comics in the posh members' library whilst waiting for their dad to finish work. Anyone who knows Mike will know he likes his allotment. Some may say he took his hobby a bit too far when he insisted on building the award-winning Winter Gardens in the heart of the city. So now, even in bad weather, something magical will be happening in the Winter Gardens. His work didn't just focus on the centre of town. Another visionary moment came when he spotted an old flour mill on the outskirts of town in need of renovation. Mike saw its potential to become a hub for cooperatives and small businesses and through clever negotiations managed to buy the mill for the enormous sum of one pound and then got three quarters of a million pounds to renovate it. Again, Sarah remembers Mike finding a feral cat in amongst the rubble of the old mill. He took it home to look after it and patiently spent the next four days trying to coax it out from behind the cooker. One of the highlights of Mike's career was meeting Nelson Mandela, when in 1993, Sheffield gave Nelson the freedom of the city. In 1998, Mike's leadership of the city was cut short when Liberal Democrats took over his seat and he was no longer involved in politics. Having married one of the world's leading yoga teachers, OK, OK, Francis paid me to leave that bit in. Mike discovered a new area for his talents, renovating the chapel that became the Sheffield Yoga Centre. 
His love of old buildings gave him the opportunity to restore the original windows of the Oak Centre and keep its authentic character. So now, all that's left to say is, Mike, hope this has brought back some fond memories. Happy 70th birthday and enjoy your celebration. Up 